Ever since I bought my iPad 2020 Pro 12.9 inch, I have to say my productivity has gone significantly up. To the point where I actually built myself a minimalist walking desk for my iPad Pro to get my daily work done, whether it be for work, whether it be on a personal level, it's really for me to get some activity. And while I figured out a way to get my body working, I needed to figure out how I'm supposed to get my mind more productive. So I came up with 10 different types of applications to boost your productivity while you work from home. First, let's talk about note taking. So the application that I like to use for note taking is Notability. Now I've been using Notability for a number of years. You can do so many great things on this. You can take some excellent notes. I use this almost on a daily basis when I'm having my meetings, whether it be over WebEx or whether it be over Zoom, and I'm writing things on, you know, as I go. What I love about it is the ability to just go and sketch anywhere if you want freely, you know, show people the concepts uh, that you may be thinking about because you can share your screen, obviously, um, as you're having these conversations. And if you make a mistake anywhere, you can just move things around and then continue your way on typing something else if you want as well. The really cool thing I like about this is the ability to double tap. And as you see on the top, I'm toggling between pen and eraser as I double tap on the pencil. So I don't even have to touch the screen. So it's super, super convenient. Uh, I think this application cost about uh, 10 or $13 or something like that. Um, but you have the ability to tag your notes with whatever you know you want. So if you want to go search for them later on, you have the ability to do that as well. So overall, I really recommend this application. All right, so the next category we're gonna look at is virtual conferences. So I use WebEx quite a bit, especially for work, given the fact that it is a tool of choice for us at work. Um, I feel that this tool is very robust, a great security, and overall has great performance. We use it quite extensively in uh, some of the companies that I've worked for, including banking, retail, telecommunications. Uh, and it's as easy as just starting up your own personal room. People attend your personal room and uh, you can connect to the audio either using a telephone or you can use the internet. And what I really like about it is that it integrates very easily into your work calendar so you can accept meetings from there as well. Now there is a slight cost to it. I believe there's a free tier, but it's not as good as some of its competitors, which I'm about to talk about in a second. But if you are willing to pay, this is a rock solid tool. Now not everybody may want to use something like WebEx, so there's a free tool called Zoom. And uh, Zoom has gotten a lot better over the last couple of months. It took a little bit of heat over the last uh, couple of weeks slash months just because of some security issues it was having. But now it's gotten better, especially they've added password authentication so you can't just join a random room. But uh, again, you can book a new meeting, join a new meeting, schedule or share a screen. So it's also a very effective tool. And best of all, like I said, it is free. All right, now let's talk about whiteboarding solutions. There's so many people that are working from home nowadays and the ability to collaborate and to share our thoughts and ideas is becoming difficult, but that's where digital whiteboarding solutions come into play. The tool that I've been playing around with and I like is actually called Miro. And what I like about Miro is that you have the ability to set up up to two boards on the free tier, but if you have a company account, I believe it's an unlimited number of uh, accounts. And it's a great way to share thoughts. So in this case, if you have something like a Kanban board, you can all see the screen at the same time, contribute to the, to the board at the same time, uh, but also you know hold your Kanban sessions or your Agile sessions at the same time as well. And this would be no different than you sitting in an Agile room or in a Kanban room going over some of these uh, details. What's also really great about this tool is the amount of templates you can use. So if you scroll down and I just go to all templates, there's a plethora of different types of templates you can use for your daily conversations, depending on the type of uh, meeting that you're going to be having. So overall, I think this is a really good tool for whiteboarding. You can do traditional whiteboarding as well, but also hold some more advanced types of meetings, which is great. And just a reminder, if you enjoy content like this and programming in Python and more about technology, please hit that like and subscribe button right now. All right, so the next on the list is communication. So again, during this pandemic, it's absolutely critical that we keep strong communication with our teams, family, friends, what have you. For that, I like using Slack. What I really like about Slack is you can create your own room and then invite friends to that room, or you can have your own business meeting room if you'd like, or colleagues or whatever it is. And you can start up different conversations and communicate without having to flood the emails. And what I really like about Slack is the ability to have both personal and professional rooms that are different from one another. So you don't get two of them mixed up. The tool is free to use. It's awesome to collaborate. I use it almost on a daily basis to either check up on my team to see how they're doing or for progress on specific types of projects that we've got going. 
and again way better than email and overall it connects well it integrates with almost every single interface that i can think of uh, and so again it's a great tool especially if you're using it more for personal reasons but even for professional reasons and you have to pay for the license it is totally totally worth it in my opinion all right next on the list we're going to talk about security now for security for those of you who've been watching my channel you know that i'm a big fan of nordvpn I've been using this VPN service for a couple of years without any issue. So as more and more people work from home, that just means there's more and more people that are vulnerable to the bad guys. So always keep yourself protected, especially if you're just surfing and browsing on the internet. Obviously, if you're part of a work situation, you probably have a work VPN. But for personal browsing, I recommend NordVPN. Check the description for some details on some discounts. All right, next up, we have document processing. And for this, I actually really like to use the Apple suite of all tools. So that includes Numbers, Pages, and Keynote. I find that using these interfaces just works so much easier when I'm transferring documents between my Mac and my iPad Pro. In this case, this is the iPad Pro application. And if I need to go ahead and translate or transfer anything into Excel, I have the ability to do that as well. Although I don't really use spreadsheets in general too much. Um, I do run a team of a whole bunch of developers and data scientists. So really, you know, we use alternative tools like uh, Angular Base for an ends, um, Jupyter Notebook and all that other stuff. But if I just need to go ahead and do any type of work, the reason why I also love this is it's really easy to annotate on these uh, applications as well. So if I need to quickly circle something and send something back to my team and say, hey, listen, help me understand these numbers a little bit better, this is a great interface and tool to do this. And similarly, I actually really like the Keynote interface. I just find that the templates look so much more fresh than that of on uh, PowerPoint. And I've always gravitated to using these types of templates or these uh, or this ecosystem in general. It's just a lot more familiar to me. Uh, the ability to, like I said, go ahead and create presentations. You can convert these back into PowerPoint if you really need to. Um, but I just like the functionality and the look of Keynote. Even though Microsoft Office is a good alternative, I still prefer the Apple suite of tools. All right, next up, we're talking about calendar management. And for calendar management, one of my favorite applications, always has been, is Fantastical. Now, Fantastical is a really amazing tool. It is a paid tool from what I remember because I got it a couple of years ago. But the ability to customize and add as many as calendars as you want. Um, if you have authority to add some of your work calendars, assuming that uh, you pass the permissions and stuff, you can do that. But the ability to just to manage things with a nice, clean interface is always appreciated. It's got great Apple Watch support. Works great on the iPad Pro, great, works great on the iPhone as well. And it's got some great settings. Uh, you can go ahead and add as many as accounts, like I said, tailor the appearance, add in alerts, notifications, widgets, you name it. It's got a ton of functionality and it is an absolutely amazing tool. I have everything in Fantastical for me uh, because it just makes my life fantastical. And for those of you who know me, programming is a really big thing for me. I love using programming applications on my iPad Pro. The one that I use is called Pi2, although I switch between that and Pythonista as well. And what I really like about Pi2 is the ability to create uh, applications with an abundance of different libraries, especially for the data scientists out there. If you're interested in learning more about applications you can use for coding, I'm going to link the video in the description and in the corner. As well, I'm going to link a different video that's going to give you some insight on how I use Pi2 to actually create two different machine learning models right off the iPad. All right, now coming in next is cloud storage. So I actually prefer using Google Drive. And the main reason why I like using Google Drive is I have the ability to connect Google Drive to Google Colab which is a basically a Jupyter Notebook online that allows me to use Google's uh, resources, including GPUs, TPUs, to go ahead and build machine learning models. Outside of that, I also use Dropbox and I use Box. It really depends on what I'm doing and what application integrates with what cloud storage. But at the end of the day, I prefer Google Cloud. Outside of that, I'm really agnostic to the type of uh, cloud platform that I use. I don't really pay for any cloud storage. I generally stay on the free tiers because I don't really move around uh, large files that big that actually require me to be on a paid tier. And finally, the last category is workspace productivity. What I mean by this is the ability to use dual monitors. For that, I use and sometimes still use a tool called Duet. Now I haven't used Duet in a while, especially as Apple has launched Sidecar, which is a free version kind of of Duet. It basically enables you to share your screen as a second screen or a second monitor for your laptop. 
And again, as more people are working from home, having that second monitor is getting crucial. The reason why Duet still has a bit of a value proposition is because not everybody can use Sidecar. You need to be on a specific OS or newer to use Sidecar. And some of the older iPads and some of the older Macs do not support it. So Duet is still a viable option for you to go ahead and use a dual screen. So as you can see, I'm just dragging over a Chrome browser with uh, Amazon on it. Uh, the one benefit that I will say that uh, Duet does have that I like, the ability to still use touch. So you can go ahead and use touch and uh, click on whatever you want, which is also awesome as well. I will say Duet kind of went through a strange pricing screen as of late. Uh, they've got a couple of different tiers, which is you can either plug it in, in which case this you have to plug directly into your Mac, or you can do like a Bluetooth version. But I think they've kind of confused the market a bit. So I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest with you. All right, guys, that's 10 applications to help boost your productivity while you work from home. And again, you can use these applications all on your iPad, iPhone, whatever you got laying around. So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.